I heard YouTube Rewind was really popular last year. So I thought I'd do my own. And then a week later, I was still editing. I mean, I had an epic year. It was awesome. But it just took so much work to put together. And the more I worked on it, the less epic it felt. <laughs> I'm still pretty excited about uh, all of the clips that I'm about to share with you. I just wish it hadn't taken me so long. And I wish that the level of the video matched the epicness I feel for the year. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website, gallery, blog, store, whatever you want. You can save 10% off your first website, gallery, blog, store, or whatever you want it to be by going to squarespace.com slash photorec TV. Seriously, in 2019, you need to have a beautiful space that is yours, owned by you, that you send people to, to see your very best work. Don't rely on social media to do that. January 1st started off with my hair looking like this. And I released a video about Lightroom best practices, new year, new catalog, and how to archive the past. Links to many of the videos I mentioned, the workshops I talk about, and the products are all right down below. Then I headed off to Yosemite National Park. We had warmer than usual conditions, and I captured some time lapses that I was really happy with. I used the Sony a7R 3 for these with the MyOps trigger, and again, there's links to these products right down below. I returned home from that workshop, released a video on the crappy Young Innovators Micro Four Thirds camera that shows you just how hard it is to code reliable and accurate autofocus. I also share a video on the five features I love about the a7R 3 and a few complaints, and headed off to Vietnam and Cambodia. It was my first time in this region of the world, and it was awesome. Good food, friendly people, and some amazing scenery. Checking Halong Bay off my bucket list was awesome, and a visit to Angkor Wat. Without a doubt, though, my favorite moment of the whole trip was our hike through the remote mountainous village in northern Vietnam and handing an older woman a photo that I'd captured of her and then printed with a little Polaroid zip printer that I had with me. Her reaction was just awesome. It may have been the very first time that she'd ever been handed a picture of herself. I published three videos from this tour, and you can find those right down below. Came back home, released a video on photographing the Milky Way, my favorite apps for photographers, and a discussion of the gear I used on the Vietnam trip, and my huge disappointment with the Surface Pro system. I hear the updated version is noticeably better. Maybe I'll try it again. In February, we fostered the cutest little puppy, got updated shots for future travels, and I fixed my one-eyed dog before heading off to the snowiest Yellowstone trip Ever. Two feet of fresh snow fell during this workshop, and we had some awesome animal encounters. I also flew the drone at 8,200 feet and in sub-zero Fahrenheit weather, not in Yellowstone National Park, outside, and it worked. Four days after freezing my butt off in Yellowstone, I was in Las Vegas for the unveiling of the new Sony a7 III and released a video comparing the Sony a7R III and the Sony a7 III, which right now today... I think is a bit more of a difficult choice now the A7 III price has fallen. The better EVF and 42 megapixels in the A7R III make it a pretty compelling purchase. Flew home at the beginning of March, went tubing with the kids and the 100 to 400 before setting off for Africa via Amsterdam. Look, staying in tents in the Serengeti and on the rim of Ngorogoro Crater, it's beyond words. I mean, it was just an awesome experience again. There were some extra bits of adventure on this trip from the massive rainfall and the bridges that washed out and the roads that turned to rivers. But overall, I certainly captured a few photos on this adventure that are some of my favorite of the year. Returned home and released my full review of the Sony 100-400 and 1.4 extender. In short, it is awesome. April started with a Narbox review. Ugh. And a review of what remains, in my opinion, one of the best digital frames on the market, the Nixplay Iris. Looking for alternatives to the Narbox, I reviewed the Western Digital Wireless HD. It's a much better value, but offers less features. Took a look at the Sigma 100-400, which is actually a very good and very affordable zoom lens. And then I heard about a great gray owl a few hours drive north. They're rare in this part. I took a gamble, made the drive, and found him. It was the last morning he was spotted in the area. It, take the chance, people take the chance. This is one of my favorite photos of 2018 because I took a chance. Even if you hadn't been there, I made a few more photos that day in that area 
and just fell more in love with the Pacific Northwest. Mid-April, I headed back to Las Vegas for a workshop in the desert southwest. I arrived a few days early to scout locations and lived out of my Peter rental Cohen, minivan. It was jelly. awesome. And some of the solitary travel I did that week influenced how I approached the rest of the year. That was, it was less about photography and more about pushing myself to go further and faster. I shared some wildlife tips and tricks when I returned home and then headed off on a little anniversary vacay with my lady. We hiked, we explored, we enjoyed Vancouver. In May, I finally published that Hasselblad review and a review of the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 and set off late one Sunday night to capture the Milky Way above Mount St. Helens and fell more in love with the Pacific Northwest. I also released a video about the lesser known feature in some Sony cameras that can give you epic zoom while shooting 4K. Then I flew back to the desert southwest for another workshop. And this included my first visit to the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Got my hands on the Fuji GFX for a hot minute, an amazingly practical medium format mirrorless with affordable lenses. Made a little sandfall action happen in Horseshoe Bend Slot Canyon, which is a favorite picture of mine, before getting stuck in a tiny house and taking a blurry photo of our pre-sunrise hikers in Zion. Between teaching moments, I scouted for upcoming workshops. Came home and started to experiment with water drop photography with a Myops splash kit and tried to fly the Mavic Air into my face. In June, I took a look at the Sigma 14-24 f2.8. Awesome lens for the money, but it's a bulky and heavy lens. Released a video on creating those water drop photos with a Myop Splash and a quick look at the Canon EOS M50, which in hindsight, with the release of the EOS R, it's kind of left in this gray area during this time of mount transition. And silly milestone, my first stop motion review. I then released my thoughts on the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. I had a local workshop and a Lightroom class. Taught astrophotography at Joshua Tree National Park before heading off to Norway for a redunculous Arctic adventure. The Arctic and this trip spoke to me in a way that no other has. I love the polar regions and will forever remember this trip and our epic polar bear encounter and my drone flights. See, I had to work hard to get permission. You're not allowed to just go up there and fly your drone around, so I thought I might as well make it worthwhile. And this is where I captured my favorite photo of the year. Now, the bear is certainly in my top five, but this picture of the Brazel Green ice front from my Mavic Pro is my favorite photo of the year. Honestly, thinking about this shot sends my stomach into knots. This was further from the ship than I wanted to fly. There was some breeze. The ship's radar constantly caused errors with the drone and the GPS, but I knew there was a potential of an amazing shot. After all, where was all of that water coming from? And there it was. Returned to Seattle in July, taught another local workshop at Mount St. Helens, released two videos from the Arctic trip, and seven reasons why the Air is a better drone for many people, along with a comparison of the 1.4 and 2 time teleconverters for Sony. Spent an epic evening with my kids at Lake Cushman on the Olympic Peninsula, and fell more in love with the Pacific Northwest, and started seriously testing the Outtex underwater housing. In August, I spent time at Mount Rainier scouting for upcoming workshops and released my review of the Sony RX100 Mark IV and the magnetic breakthrough filters, and talked about the just announced Nikon Z6 and Z7, along with releasing the first drinks and critiques video. Before we headed off to the Olympic National Park and Mount Rainier workshop, we made an offer on a house in Seattle. The end of August was frantic packing, and then September. We moved. September 3rd, to be precise. I then flew to Hawaii on the 4th for the launch of the Canon EOS R. I like it, but was a little underwhelmed. Captured this photo with the EOS R and the Altex housing. Sure, I wish I had not nicked the fin, but I envisioned this shot as a possibility, brought what I needed, caught a ride to the local beach, and 15 minutes after entering the water, spotted this guy. My first time in Hawaii, my first good look at a sea turtle, and one of my top five picks of 2018. I came home for a few days where I picked up the Parrot Anaphy and headed off to Iceland. We had everything you could hope for on that workshop. Beautiful days, aurora-filled nights, dramatic lighting, and baby puffins. I can't wait till we return in 2020. If you want to join us, there's a link below. In September, I released my review of the Tamron 28-75. I continue to love that lens three months later. I also released my review of the EOS R and a discussion of that multifunction swipe bar along with a look at the 18L and 26L Mindshift bags that was part of our giveaway. October, headed off on the last Desert Southwest workshop of the year. We had some amazing light and dramatic weather. 
From there, we went straight to the Albuquerque Balloon Festival, and I used the EOS R to create one of my favorite time lapses of the year. And then straight on to a road trip vacation from Santa Fe to Denver, including the amazing Meow Wolf interactive art installation and Great Sand Dunes National Park. I released videos looking at the Sigma 14mm versus the Venus Laua 15mm. I talked about a completely waterproof camera bag and another drinks and critiques video. Came home, bought a couch, finished up my review of the Parrot, flew to Sacramento for a two-day Lightroom workshop, stopped by an art show to see an old friend, ate an awesome burrito, stuck the Pixel 3 underwater, watched my kids get way too much candy for Halloween. November. My boy turned 12. I received an awesome housewarming present from David McKay and finished my review of the Parrot Anaphy. Too many issues. Pixel 3 review released. Amazing camera, especially the night shot mode. Shared some Black Friday deals, logged some good running miles, and took a look at the changes within Mavic Zoom 2. Man, it is crazy better at tracking. November is notable and it's the first month without flying in 2018, though I took several day trips and fell more in love with the Pacific Northwest. I captured photos of my niece with my A7R 3 and was reminded how useful that IAF is on small moving people. And then I went for a cold swim. And in November, the Photo Enthusiast Network celebrated a one year anniversary. As I've said elsewhere, I am incredibly proud of this photographic community and resources that we provide to you all. If you want to become a better photographer in 2019, we're here for you. Link is below. December released some final thoughts on the EOS R. It's not a bad camera, but it's not good enough to be exciting upgrade or cause you to switch from anything else right now. But I am excited for what's going to come in 2019 for both Canon and Nikon and even Sony. It's going to be an interesting year as we see these lenses and these systems get fleshed out a little bit. I also shared my review of the best travel-friendly underwater housing, that's the Altex, and headed to Alaska with my daughter for the very last workshop of 2018. No luck on Aurora photography, lots of clouds, but that didn't stop us from having a blast, and we will be headed back in 2019. Link below. I got my hands on the awesome little Sony 24mm f1.4 and challenged myself to shoot some portraits with it, as well as other stuff. The Pocket Osmo arrived, and I handed it off to Kaz for his evaluation. I've also spent the month with the Z6 and the Z7, and I'll have more thoughts on those very soon, but they're very likable cameras, especially the value of the Z6. And then a little working Christmas and New Year's vacation with the family. I flew the Autel Evo drone out in the mountains, and now that brings us to the end of 2018. Google Maps tells me that I traveled almost 88,000 miles in 2018. Lightroom tells me that I shot 55,000 photos. I don't know exactly what 2019 will bring, but very soon, very soon, I'll be taking one epic trip to kick the year off. Make sure you follow me on Instagram where I share much more of the behind the scenes of the travel, the workshops, and the life, my life. Thanks so much for watching. Happy New Year and best wishes for an awesomely productive and photographic 2019. Bye-bye. I'm just showing you the good parts. Obviously, I'm not showing you the hours spent. Well, actually, I just complained about a week worth of sitting here behind the desk, didn't I? One of my share with you is that one of these two dogs has decided they no longer want to use the dog door and pretty much every night are peeing in the house. Just a little balance for you.